If your Amazon PPC results suck, it's usually because of your products or your keywords. And while I can't help you improve your product, I can definitely help you pick better keywords to advertise on. In this video, I'm going to reveal the seven strategies that I've found for keyword research, and I'll show you how they work live. All right, so I'm going to make it more fun this time. Uh, what I usually do is I just show you guys the Notion doc that I've made, and I just give it to you in the description of this video, which I'll still do because some of you guys have found that useful. But what I'm also going to do, since this is a keyword research guide, is I'll pick out an actual product, which we have over here, and I'll do the keyword research live. So you guys can actually follow along and see how this stuff works in real life. So I'm going to go through each method one by one and kind of show you how I do it for this specific ASIN. But before we do any of that, uh, let's just get into the actual product and kind of look at who's buying this stuff and what it is. So this is a uh, step stool for like babies, kids, and toddlers. Uh, people are buying it for like potty training. So I assume you put this in front of your toilet and like a kid uses this to get on the actual toilet. Uh, most people buying this are going to be parents and they're going to be buying it for their young children. Right. So with that in mind, let's go through the actual methods we have. So over here, we have the uh, top search terms report, uh, which is a list of search terms provided by Amazon. It's like several million search terms long uh, and can be found in brand analytics. So over here, um, what you'll see is, let me just get this filter off, clear filters. What you'll see is a list of uh, the top like few million search terms on Amazon. And you can check like the uh, different reporting ranges if you want. The filter hasn't removed for some reason. Uh, but in general, what you'll see is like the top few million search terms. And what you can do is you can add specific keywords or specific phrases that you want to filter this by to find similar search terms um, to what your product could advertise for. So over here, you could use something like toddler stool to describe our product. And you get around three pages of 25 rows each. That's almost 100 keywords of different search terms that you can use inside your actual, let me just expand this for us, inside your actual campaigns, right? So toddler bathroom stool, step stool toddler, toddler counter stool, you know, toddler toilet stool. All of these I don't think you'd find inside of Cerebro because I think I did run a search on this before. So all of these you wouldn't find, not all of them, but a lot of them you wouldn't find inside Cerebro. And a lot of them are going to be relevant since you're filtering by a particular phrase. Right? And sometimes you'll end up with some branded search terms in here too. Right? Um, then you can try to change your phrase a bit to hit on different keywords. So you can do something like kids stool instead. Let me find results. We got another six. You can do something like step stool kids and this is just going to come from your own knowledge of the product and of your customer where you can add different variations in over here we have another two pages right you can maybe try step two or step stool child now we got another three so between all of these different searches you probably have around 100 plus right and a lot of them are going to be relevant and a cool trick here is you can see the top performing ASINs on each keyword. So you can look at their product title and you can decide if they're relevant for what you're trying to sell, right? And you can also see like their conversion share, their click share and everything else and the uh, search frequency rank of the keyword. So the smaller this number is, the higher the search volume on the keyword. So you can kind of prioritize different keywords that way and break up your campaigns. So you can have like super high volume keywords in their own campaigns. Then you can group some of the uh, higher frequency rank keywords into campaigns together. So you can use that to actually organize your campaigns too. This is the first method. Um, the second method is the uh, search query performance report, which is also another keyword list that you're going to find in brand analytics. Let me just move my face over here. Uh, it's also another list you're going to find there. But this one is brand and ASIN specific. Right? So you can filter either by brand or by ASIN. You're going to get multiple pages. Over here, we're filtering by brand. You're going to get multiple pages of results. So this is almost a thousand results. Right? And a lot of them are going to be relevant. Right? A lot of these are going to be relevant. You know, especially if you run like a one or two ASIN business, you could just use the brand view. Right? If not, you just go into ASIN view. 
that's also probably going to give you a few hundred search terms if your product is big enough, right? And the good thing here is you can actually see the real search volume instead of like the rank. So you can see the actual search volume. And then you can see how you're performing compared to the rest of the category. So you can see like, for example, you get this percentage of impressions, right? And you get this percentage of clicks. So even though we're getting 13% of impressions, we're getting 75% of clicks, for example, right? But, you know, we're getting 0% of the add to cart rate you know, and 0% of the purchase rate. So you can kind of use the, uh, the numbers here to figure out pretty much how well you're performing on individual search terms that are most likely going to be relevant to your brand. So over here, we have something like green gnome hat, which has nothing to do with the other search terms. So not everything's going to be relevant, but around 70 to 80% of those are going to be reasonably relevant. And you can see how well you perform on them. And based on that, you can decide whether to invest more or less into these search terms. Right? And you get like a pretty good number of them. So this is the second method. Most beginner, intermediate, and some advanced others aren't using these two brand analytics lists. Most of them are just using Helium 10 or Jungle Scout. So if you haven't used any of these yet, you're most likely going to find the wealth of keywords in there. So I'd recommend starting here. Um, the third method is reverse ASIN. A lot of you guys already know this one, but essentially what you do is you just go to Cerebro and you find competing ASINs. Let me just pull something out. I'd usually go for a few ASINs, maybe up to five, uh, but to save us time, I'm just going to pick like one ASIN. So that's maybe this one's relevant. Let's take this one. All right, I'm not sure why this one's taking time to load. All right, so that's still loading. Um, but essentially what we do is we pick out the ASIN. We're just going to take it from our own product. Uh, we pick it out and we throw it in here. And you throw like a few others in. Try doing two, three, four, or five. You hit get keywords. Right, and this should load. Let me see if I can pull this one. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me pull this one in as well. Right, then we go back in. Right, and you add the other product in. I'll just save us the time and not add it in. But you'd add a couple of products in here, and you get like a few thousand search terms back, usually. Right, and you have like stuff stool kit, nursery stuff stool. So you also have stuff here that you wouldn't find in brand analytics. Child stuff stool. You know, you have a couple other things. The more you scroll, the worse it gets. So if you go back to page 38, you'll probably find that it's not like super relevant like five stool, for example. A lot of these are still good, actually, which is impressive. But usually, the farther back you go, um, the, less, uh, the less good they, uh, they are. Right? But in essence, if you add like a couple ASINs in, like two ASINs or even three or four, you'd usually get around five to 6,000 search terms back. And then you can add your own filters over here. To kind of pick out the ones you actually want to use because you're not going to go through all 5,000. So you can do something like organic rank. So you can have a minimum rank of one and a maximum of 30. That's what I usually do. You can have a minimum search volume. Um, where'd that go? Right. So you can have a minimum search volume, which I can find. Here we go. Uh, we can make this 100 or 50 or whatever else it is. It depends on your product category and the amount of revenue you have. So you can add your own minimum. Uh, then you can filter for like including or excluding certain phases, right? And then you can hit apply filter, and that would usually take you to a much smaller list, usually a couple hundred, maybe like your 400 too. And they're going to be like 70% relevant. So usually at that point, what I do is I just start searching these up one by one. So I'd search something up like Peace Tool. So you can just open this on Amazon, for example, right? And you can see that this isn't like totally unrelevant, but over a year, like a lot of these aren't exactly selling to the same ICP. So these aren't special made for toddlers. So your conversion rate on this might be lower. Obviously I can tell without running the ad, but you might convert a lot less on this. Then you want on a more relevant keyword, which doesn't mean you can exclude it. Like you should probably put this in and build on it differently, but it's something to test. 
So what I do is I'd start um, opening all of these up in different tabs, right? Like IKEA stepping stool. Now, a lot of these things aren't as relevant as the keywords we saw in the first two pages, but you can open these up and see what the search results are like. And generally, if the product strength top like 20 are similar to what you're selling, then that's probably a good enough signal that the keywords are relevant. So I just add my filters in. Uh, most important one is organic rank, 1 to 30. And if you have a couple ASINs in here, you should still get like a good number of keywords. Then you can do search volume. I sometimes don't use search volume because a lot of these are inaccurate. So it could be like a 300 search volume keyword and Helium 10 would have it down as 50. So I don't always put this in. Uh, but you can add whatever filters you want and apply and you'd get a smaller keyword list and you can just go through it yourself or if you have a VA or like a PPC specialist who's helping you out, that's also something you can use them for. So this is method number two. Uh, method number three, sorry, but this is method number three. Method number four would be uh, keyword research tools. So these are like different tools where you can put a seed keyword in, um, which is like what we did with brand analytics, but this one works slightly different. So you put like a seed keyword in, uh, and it gives you other similar keywords, right? Let me see if we have this open. Let's do toddler stool. It got keywords. Uh, load from history. Right. So let's scroll down. Do you have almost 6,000 keywords over here, which is a lot, right? And we have a bunch of uh, relevant keywords, right? So not all of these are gonna be super good. They have like different things like Costco Kitchen. And this is usually what's bad with keyword research tools um, is that a lot of them will have irrelevant keywords like fold up, um, you know, something in Chinese. I'm not sure if this is relevant or not. But a lot of these are just gonna be random, right? But we still have some good ones like stools for bathroom, um, bathroom kid step stool, right? We still have some good ones and you have 112 pages, right? But also you have a bunch of bad ones. So you have like kitchen size, you had Costco kitchen. So those aren't really something that you should advertise for. Uh, but what you can do is you can also filter through this. So you can filter for phrases containing stool, for example. That's going to get rid of anything that's absolutely irrelevant. Then you can exclude certain phases and you can hit apply filters. That should cut down the number of keywords we got. Right? So we just cut out 2,000 keywords that probably had nothing to do with what we're selling. Then again, like you can probably add more keywords in so you can exclude some things, right? Um, you can exclude things on the basis of search volume. And uh, you can like just go through this list again manually like you or your VA could go through this. If you went through this and it's a few thousand keywords, uh, you probably spend a lot of time. So I'd recommend getting some VA or someone part-time from Upwork to kind of just open these up in separate tabs and confirm if these are relevant or not. Or if you're like crunched for time and you have no one to help you, you could just export all of this onto a Google sheet and just like go through it without searching it up and just remove anything that's 100% irrelevant and keep the rest and test it out. Um, so yeah, that's the fourth method. After that, we have the Google Keyword Planner. So Google Keyword Planner uh, is both good and bad in some cases. Good because you're going to find a bunch of keywords that you wouldn't find with regular Amazon keyword research tools. Bad because some keywords are just not going to show up. You're going to get like three keywords back. So over here, um, let me, why can't we scroll? Let me actually scroll down on this. Right, so over here, I tested laundry detergent and I'm about to tell you why, but we were able to get 2000 keywords back. And what's good is a lot of these are actually relevant. So you have like laundry sheets, laundry detergent, detergent sheets, you even have like branded search terms like Tide Pod. And also you got a bunch back and they're mostly gonna be more relevant than what you'd get with regular Amazon keyword research tools. But the issue is that a lot of the keywords that you'd wanna search for, so toddler, school, for example, it, um, aren't going to show off that well. So I'm not sure why it's not letting me scroll here. But if, uh, if I could get this to work, um, what you'd see is 
that we don't actually get anything back for toddler's tool. Right? So for toddler's tool, you've got like either one result or nothing at all. If you just search up stool, you'd get three results, even though stool is a pretty high volume uh, keyword. Right? right? Here we go. All keywords were removed. Nothing shows up for toddler's tool. Again, over here is stool. Let me just search this one up. You know, you got like two ideas, pedal stool and stooly, which don't really mean much. So it's good when it works. Uh, it doesn't always work. But when it does, you are going to get some keywords that you won't find in brand analytics, you won't find in keyword research tools, and you won't find in reverse ASIN tools. So it's good when it works, but depending on your category and on your actual product, you might find nothing. This is something to be careful of. But it's always good to test anyways, and it's free. It doesn't require a subscription. Uh, after that, we have Amazon Autocomplete. So over here, I already did this and took a screenshot, but I'm going to do it again live for you guys. But what you do is you just go in here. You just type your main keyword in. Right. Toddler stool. Right. And you got a bunch of suggestions. Toddler stool helper. You know, to toddler stool. Um, sorry, sorry, toddler step stool. Toddler stool for toilet. You know, toddler kitchen stool helper. Right. Then you can take one of the suggestions and you can try searching it up again. Right. And you get even more suggestions. So you can usually get around 10 suggestions per keyword that you put in. Um, so over here, you can just count those. You've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine suggestions uh, per keyword. Then you can take those suggestions and you can search them up again. So we could search up toddler step stool, for example. And usually most of these suggestions are going to have high search volume. Right, since Amazon suggesting them based on what customers search for. So usually you are going to get clicks on those keywords. So let's just search up toddler stuff stool. This one's relevant, so we're going to use it. So over here, you just want to check for the suggestions. Right, then you got another nine. Right. This could even be more than nine. But yeah, you keep getting more suggestions from the suggestions. So if you follow this like through, you could turn one keyword into like 80, 90, or 100 keywords, right? And then you can search those suggestions up again. So you could search something like toddler steps tool for a toilet. You know, the more you go through with this, uh, the less suggestions you're going to start getting, eventually hitting zero. But like you can easily turn like a few hundred keywords into maybe a few thousand. Toilet. Again, we got three this time. You know, and you can just follow this through until you hit zero suggestions. And that should pretty much add like another few hundred keywords to your list. And they're mostly all gonna be relevant. So you're not gonna spend much time searching them up. This is this was a, another method. Um, I think the last method here is harvesting. So with harvesting, uh, you're essentially pulling the search term reports from Amazon. So if you're running like bot campaigns, race campaigns, or auto campaigns, uh, you're going to show up for a bunch of search terms, right? Other than the keywords that you're targeting. So if I'm just targeting toddler's tool, I might show up for something like toddler's tool for bathroom, right? And there are two good things out this. Number one is you just get like a really, really big number of keywords. So if you're advertising on like 100 broad and 100 phrase keywords and you have an auto campaign running, you're probably going to get a few thousand search terms every month, right? Not everything's going to be relevant, but you're going to get a bunch of search terms every month and the vast majority of them will be relevant or close to relevant right that's the first thing so you got a bunch of search terms or a bunch of keywords just delivered to you and the second thing obviously is that you know those are going to be based on your current like product and your current data whether because it's phrase and broad and you actually pick the base keyword yourself or because it's auto and amazon uses its machine learning algorithms to figure out what's relevant you are going to get good search terms and there are two things you can do about this Number one is you can just use a tool like AI Hello to just transfer the converting search terms automatically. So I have rules set up in my accounts with our software where it's like um, if you hit X amount of conversions, so over here we have like a bar, as you can see in the picture, and you can just switch the actual number. So you can say like if anything gets one conversion, I want to move it in exact match to this ad group, right? Or if it gets like two conversions, I want to move it to broad in this ad group. And you can obviously move ASINs too. 
So this is the first method. The second method is to actually go in before you get conversions and just filter through everything. Like you want any like keyword list from Magnet or Cerebro or like brand analytics even, just filter through it, remove anything irrelevant, search up the rest on Amazon and start using those for your campaigns without them having to convert, right? You can just teach like treat this like any random keyword list. So that's the second option. The only caveat here though, is that search term reports contain a lot of one-off keywords. And what I mean by one-off keyword is a keyword that barely gets any searches. So someone will search something random up, uh, they'll find your listing, they'll click it, they might buy, but the underlying search term might be super rare, right? Because this is only one person searching it up. So a lot of the keywords you pull from your search term reports will end up getting zero clicks. That's the only caveat to this. But other than that, we have all these methods. You have brand analytics, you have different tools like Helium 10, Jungle Scout, Ahrefs that can do both keyword research and uh, reverse ASIN lookups. You know, you have Google Keyword Planner, you have the Amazon Autocomplete, which most people aren't using because it requires a bit of manual effort. And then you have both automated and manual harvesting from your search term reports. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you use all of these methods, I think we covered what, like eight methods. If you use every single one of them, you are going to land on some good keywords. Right? And once you have good keywords, it's just about mastering your bids, which I'll create a video about later. Um, but once you've mastered your bids and you have good keywords, pretty much like everything's going to start going well if you have a good product, obviously. That's the other caveat. If you have a good product, all you need are good keywords and good bids. There are a bunch of other things you can run. Like you can talk about campaign structure. You know, you can talk about Amazon DSP, about the AMC, about day parting. All of that stuff is the final 5%, which helps you improve your results like slightly. But the main thing and the bulk of your performance with Amazon PPC is just going to be the keywords that you pick. And that's the main thing. And the bids that you put on those keywords. And that's it. So right now we just covered half of Amazon PPC essentially. The other half is going to be covered in a separate video. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys found this useful. If you want to use our automated keyword research tools and our automated harvesting, you can check out our website, aihello.com and book a call. Um, either me or one, someone from my team will show up and uh, we'll be happy to guide you on anything and everything Amazon ads. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys again later.